Hey guys, Paul here with PathTech. In this video, we're going to talk about YouTube Basics. I'm going to use PowerPoint, Camtasia 9, tiny little bit of Photoshop just to explain some pixel dimensions, that kind of thing. But I'm going to explain 720p, 1080p, how to use PowerPoint, how to set your slide size. And most importantly, I'm going to show you a really cool trick for taking advantage of 4 by 3 aspect ratio PowerPoints that every multinational corporation has gazillions of them. And I'll show you how to incorporate them into a widescreen format and still have a really cool placement for your picture in picture. So if that's of interest to you, let's get started. Okay, so let's get to it. So you can see on the screen here, I've got three numbers or three sets of numbers. We're gonna ignore 4K video because the infrastructure isn't in place. Most people are recording to YouTube, they're going to 720p or 1080p. So that's what we're gonna focus on. And primarily in this video, 720p. So I'm just gonna hit escape and get into the normal view of PowerPoint and come down to slide number two. So 1280p, what is that exactly? 1280 pixels by 720 pixels and as you can see in the top here uh, 1280p equals 17.8 inches by 10 inches uh, that's your slide size that you need to have in PowerPoint if you're doing artwork in PowerPoint that you're going to take into your video editing program in this case it's going to be Camtasia 9 uh, PowerPoint 2016 and a tiny bit of Photoshop CS6 but I promise you this is not a Photoshop uh, tutorial. Okay, so here's what you need to do. When you start your PowerPoint uh, slide deck, come up to design and then come across to the right hand side and you'll see custom slide size. And as you can see, I've got mine set to 17.778 by 10 because I know that's the 720p that I'm looking for. But a lot of people get mucked up because they'll come down here and, and select widescreen thinking that's 720p and you end up with 13 inches by seven and a half or they'll come over and select 16 by 9 and they end up with 10 by 5 which is even worse um, so we're going to go back to 17.778 by 10 we're going to click ok now take a look at the difference in brown here there's your widescreen. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but it's only 13 inches by 7.5 inches. Not good enough for 720p. As compared to 18 inches or 17.7 by 10 inches, which is what you need for 720p. So if you use widescreen in the brown area here, you'd be stretching your artwork and your pixels and everything, and it's gonna look gammy. It's not gonna look very good. So that's why you wanna set your slide size to the proper 720p settings. And so you wanna do that up front, and then you'll be off to the races. Second tip I wanna share with you um, is the Z effect. So when you're laying out your PowerPoint slides, if you're an instructional designer, you may know this, but if you're just a YouTube newbie, this may not have ever occurred to you that there is such a thing. Google did a study years ago with heat sensors on people's eyeballs, checking out, you know, when somebody's looking at a website, they want to know where their eyes are going. Why? Because Google wants their eyeballs glued to the advertisement every second of every day. So the Z effect basically goes like this you put your logo and title top left corner because that's typically where people's eyes go to first. Then they move to the top right. You can have other title info there, subtitles, subheadings, whatever. Then their eyes come down to the bottom left. So I always put sequencing or module codes down there. And on the right hand side, you can have other bottom bar functionality, pause play buttons, depending on what you're building. But that's the Z effect in a nutshell. And the other uh, part of the Z effect is that because of this top right to bottom left, we typically want to put graphics on the left and text on the right. And I'll show you some examples in a second. So let's just scroll down here a little bit. Now you notice I've taken my slide and divided up into two content areas. I got a panel on the right, content area on the left, and I'll show you why. 10 by 7.5 is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. If you're working for a multinational corporation, or even if you're not, there are zillions, literally gajillions of, of 
four by three aspect ratio PowerPoints that people have created in multinational corporations that they want, you know, if you're an instructional designer, they want you to use those and convert them to video or something that's more contemporary for YouTube or what have you. So if you divide your 720p slide deck like this, you have a little panel on the side here, then you can do some fancy stuff like this. So now you notice that I've done a faint overlay. You can see the panel here. You can put your picture in picture on the right hand side so that it stays in one place throughout your production. So instead of having your PIP jumping from top left to bottom, top right to bottom left to all over the place like I see a lot of videos do, put it in one place and, and leave it there. You can put some key points in the panel at the top and then on the left, like on the content area here, you've got all this space to dump your 4x3 uh, PowerPoint slide deck content into this area. Put your title and logo up here, tagline, whatever you want to do sequencing number down the bottom and you're off to the races you got something that looks really professional here's just another quick example uh, this one here just a quick slide that i threw together this is an hdr graphic that i took uh, last summer and so again logo title top left tagline key points here picture and picture down the bottom and you're off to the races so now what we need to do is I'm going to show you how to take your PPT slides, your recordings, dump them into Camtasia and build your first video. So let's take a look. Okay, so before we jump into Camtasia, one thing I forgot to mention, it's, it's kind of a, a neat feature in PowerPoint and I wanted to show you. Um, we're on slide 7 right now, so what I'm going to do is File, Save As, I'm going to browse for my location. Um, videos in this case I've got a folder called YouTube basics and I'm just gonna call it slide dash 7 I'm gonna select uh, JPEG and click Save and what you'll notice is it comes up with a box that says all slides are just this one I just want to save this one slide because I'm going to dump it into Camtasia and show you how to, you know, take your slides from PowerPoint into Camtasia. Now, if I was taking a whole slide deck, 10, 12, 15 slides or 50 or 100 slides, whatever it was, then I'd select all. But in this case, I'm just going to steal the one. So what I'm going to do now is click on uh, Camtasia. And as you can see, I've got a timeline all set up here. And I'm going to come up here to Media. Whoops file import and I want to bring in that slide that we just uh, created and there it is nope there it is slide 7 perfect okay and so there's your PowerPoint slide saved as a JPEG and I can simply take this and drag it down onto my timeline make it whatever size or length I want and there we go and so if we start at the front here, you're going to see the opener video section, what I call the opener. And then typically what I do is I have my logo intro music, so I'll just play that for you. Okay, so let's... And then that leads into your main content segment. So. Uh, when you're recording in Camtasia, you, you do a recording, it records a video file, an audio file, and a screen capture file. So if some of you are wondering, like, what's the difference between Premiere, Adobe Premiere, or Final Cut, those are high-end video editing programs. And the one thing that they don't do is that they don't capture a screen at the same time they're recording. So the beauty of Camtasia is that it's capturing my webcam, for example. It's capturing my H2 Zoom microphone and my PowerPoint screen and in this case it's capturing the, the uh, Camtasia screen so whatever is on your desktop um, Camtasia is going to record it so it's a really great tool for doing uh, for instructional designers building e-learning or for anybody building YouTube videos and so really in this case here I could just do um, let's see let's open the screen up a little bit here and we just slide down here 
And let's take this section of content here and I'm going to come up and put a transition on it. I'm just going to drag the transitions down. So now, actually, I can get rid of those because I should be putting my transition on the one above, like so. And so if I play it, you'll see a nice smooth fade in. Now, the other thing you want to do is make sure that your JPEG fits your screen size. And in this case, I've set it to 720p. So um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of editing or move things around a little bit. And the other thing that I'm noticing here is that my audio has ended and it's gonna, there's gonna be quite a time lag or a gap in space and I wanna get rid of that. So what I can do is just move my cursor over like so select these hit s i can delete this and then if i slide this over this should flow together a little a little more nicely so let's take a look yeah so we've got a nice fade uh, into the powerpoint slide that we created uh, a couple of minutes ago i'm going to go to media and i'm going to grab my chilled corporate music <laughs> and just drag that down and I think in this case, what I'll do is let's just slide things up a little bit. So I've got some more room to work here. Slide this over like so. And the music already has a fade on. It's basically just going to continue from where my audio leaves off. But I definitely want to cut it out here. And then to finish this off, um, I'm just going to add my typical splash page that I created uh, I've used for years now so I'll show you an example of that but let's let's come over here and we'll just cut this audio right about here hit s uh, bring this down and I'll bring my splash page in and I'm going to put a transition on it drag the transition down move it over and last but not least I want to take this up and I think what I'll do with the audio is just put a, a fade on it uh, so audio effects and we'll fade this in this isn't the typical music that I use but uh, it'll do the job stretch that out to fill the screen size and just let's see how that plays. Now the one thing that's missing that I almost forgot um, is I haven't recorded an ending to this. So I'm going to do that now. I'll add that in and then we'll come back and you can see the finished product. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this one up here and I want to thank you for watching. I, I know that I've delivered the video from kind of an instructional design standpoint, um, which is my vocation. So that's my day job. But um, I think you'll probably agree you can apply these this basic information that I provided. Uh, anyone can use it. I mean, PowerPoint is pretty straightforward. Camtasia 9 is not that difficult to use and learn. Um, and I'm happy to share the template with you that I have. So if, you know, anybody's out there wants to take a shot at this, make your first video, I mean, just shoot me an email, connect in, and I'll be happy to email the template that I've used or answer any questions that you might have. Um, if you're new to instructional design or new to YouTube videos, um, I can offer you some tips on microphones and cameras and that kind of thing. Um, to that end, like I'm, I'm recording this right now on a Logitech C920. Uh, actually, it's a C930 um, webcam. And the microphone I'm using is uh, H2 Zoom. And then um, my camcorder that I record the intros with is just a HR, HFR 500. So, you know, it'll shoot 1080p. It's just a, a small camcorder, but it gets the job done. And uh, yeah, so I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.